Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me tonight for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So tonight we are continuing on our garden embroidery. I'm hoping that we can finish that center uh, garden area tonight. So let's get going on that stitching. Thanks again for joining me. Okay, everyone. Hello, hello. Let's scoot you over. Okay, so where we left off, we got uh, a lot of this middle area done. We finished this whole entire garden bed here, uh, and then we got almost this whole thing done here. So we're working on the tomatoes. Uh, so I have like the last little bit of greenery to do here, and then we're gonna put the cages on, like the the um, metal cages that they grow in. And then we're gonna fill it with some cherry tomatoes. And I'm actually hoping that we can get this little area done as well. Uh, let's see, so today, today's Tuesday. If we can get all that done, I think Wednesday we might be able to finish the fence and maybe the birds and maybe even the flowers. And then Thursday, maybe we'll even finish the rest of it, like the uh, let's shoot for that. So uh, maybe we can get it done by Thursday. <laughs> uh, this is this is a long one. This is definitely taking us uh, much longer than our normal patterns, but we were kind of expecting that. This is definitely a more detailed, uh, heavily um, dense with stitches uh, embroidery. Hello, Squeezy. All right, so let's get our single strand of floss here. Hey, Christy, hi, Kathy, Catherine, Adrian, nice to see y'all pop in. All right. So we got one more of this green before I have to get a whole nother piece. So this is a lot more than I need for this little bit that we got to do, but that's fine. Ugh, you guys, it is so time for me to do my nails again. They're looking so bad. I might do half of it tonight, maybe. Maybe I'll do like, I don't know, maybe I will just stay up and do my nails. Watch the new Game of Thrones show again and, and do my nails. I wonder if, um, I wonder if, I wonder if, if I'd get it done in one episode like that. I, I'm not quite sure. It does take some time. I'm getting a little bit faster with it though. All right, catching that loop, and then we're off. Let's finish the rest of this little plant here. Got a little curved up stem here, and this is like the little bit that grew over the metal part of the cage, and then it just kind of didn't make up the second level and it started drooping, drooping over the edge. We got a few tomatoes like that in the garden right now. Ooh, I might make that kaboka squash tomorrow that uh, uh, John said he talked to my dad today and he called it a gray pumpkin, which is basically, basically that our, we got a gray kaboka squash that we had actually gotten from the grocery store and we brought, um, we just didn't cook it in time before we left to like visit my parents. So we brought it with, uh, this is last year and we saved all the seeds and mom started growing them and planted it in the garden and it made a whole lot more baby, uh, kaboka squashes. So, and the nice thing about those is that um, you can eat the outside, so you don't have to like scoop out the, like flesh from the from the skin of the squash. You can actually eat the skin of it. So, ugh, it makes squash eating so much nicer. So that and delicata squash you can do that with, and uh, man, those are my favorite squash. Like literally for that reason, way less work. All right, I think we got one more little stitch to go. Oh, and I'm seeing another stitch. I gotta get um, one more little like plant stems here. Boop. All right, 
so I think that's it for the actual greenery of the uh, tomatoes. So let's make um, the tomato cages. There's like a little hint of gray for uh, the tomato cage. Oh, what color is the inside of the gray squash? It's just like a yellow orange. Uh, I suspect, I think this one might be picked a hair earlier, a hair early, but I wanted one so bad and it looked pretty close to being done. Um, so maybe it'll be like a little lighter yellow orange, maybe. I will have to take, take a picture. But I remember them being like pretty orange on the inside. But there's an orange kaboka squash and a gray kaboka squash. So I don't remember if the gray was lighter or not. But yeah, just squashy colored, but I think it's a little bit more orange than yellow, if I remember correctly. Um, all right, silver, we got a little bit here. Oh, this kind of looks like a bunch. Let's let's start with um, the scrap. Oh yeah, like where did we do gray already? And, it, and our little uh, stones there are gray. Now I kind of want them draw a Kopoka squash. Like, I should do a design of just like Alyssa's favorite squash. Just like a bunch of random random squashes. That would be a cute design. So here's where I like accidentally like, I don't know, got a couple extra loops. I am just trying to get them into me weaving in the backs here and I'm hoping to get a little bit more of them. So, all right. All this is, is the little cage that um, the tomatoes grow up in. So we're just, we're just getting a little bit of that in here. So not all the way around, but just a hint just a suggestion of a cage. That's what they're called, right? So we actually, um, <laughs> we actually have one of these tomato cages kind of in the middle of our backyard. And uh, that is to warn us where the ground bees are. So there's like a ground beehive there. Like there's a hole in there. Actually, I think it might've been like a chipmunk hole or something. Uh, and, uh, bees took over it but they're actual like bees they're like nice kind of bumblebee bees they might even be honeybees I don't know but they're not wasps I'm 100% sure of that and uh, um so I don't know <laughs> we've just kind of let them be and uh we just put a cage around it as a reminder to not like step there I don't know if that's the best idea but whatever that's where we're at now with with the bees. Just putting a tomato cage around it, but uh, we ate outside today for lunch and definitely saw them out and about. I wasn't sure if they were there anymore for a little while, but they definitely are. But for a while, I was like, oh, look at all the bees on all our flowers and in the garden and by the lavender and all that. And we're like, wow. And then we're like, oh, it's because their house is literally right next door there. All right. We got that first guy caged up. See, it's just like a cute little detail. I like that. Are the cages upside down on these? I don't know. You might be right, actually, now that I think of it. You might be right, because aren't they little at the bottom? Oh, I may have done these upside down. <laughs> Robin, you may be absolutely correct here. You're right, because the sticky parts go in the ground, and then it's little on the bottom and big on the top. Yup. Well, I am going to just pretend that it's so full that these are big round areas too and that I and that I stuck the I stuck it in the ground too far so we can't see the bottom bits but you're right I think I think I might have might have them on here a little upside down I suppose you could just not stitch that bottom one and maybe it would look a little less upside down I don't know <laughs> eh, 
funny. I could draw little feet on them, maybe, and um, it would look like it's that the bottom little prongs in, in the ground. All right, and this one is so full that we just have a couple little tiny stitches going across to just suggest, um, just suggesting a little bit of that cage. So I think just like just like that one. So that one's um, even more full. <laughs> yep, Amy. I'm gonna pretend I didn't do that. I'm gonna pretend that the the like stake parts are just really pushed in the ground. We're we're really wanting to make those some sturdy growing tomatoes. All right, this is enough to use for a uh, stone or two. We got some more stones. All right, now the fun part. Let's do a whole pile of French knots. Oh, I just have a tiny bit here. I'm going to get a fresh piece because we're going to need more than that. Cherry tomato time. Zoop. Okay. I think um, I'm going to loop around some stitches that are already on the back for this one because the loop method doesn't work well when you do when you're making a stitch that basically goes in almost the same hole or the same hole and the French knot's pretty close so uh, we are just going to loop around let's just loop around some of this gray here grab that loop there we go we're just around that gray little bit right there. All right, so for French knots, I'm gonna be like setting it down on the ground here and picking it up kind of a bunch. Uh, that's, that's how uh, it works best for me. And we're just gonna fill this filler up with cherry tomatoes. So John did manage to get a few cherry tomatoes before the squirrels ate them uh, yesterday. They don't touch the the peppers at all. So we did get a, a whole bunch of peppers, um, which was awesome. But yeah, we're going to have to catch those tomatoes. So we do have cherry tomatoes ready, but our other tomatoes aren't are still pretty green. Ooh, I should actually check those to see if they're eating the green tomatoes. Okay, but so Jenna mentioned this today. Did, did someone say last year that before the tomatoes are up all the way, like while they're still, while they're grown, but before they are like developing tomatoes, that they hang red Christmas bulbs from the tomatoes. And then the squirrels are like, figure out that like, oh, we can't eat these things. So then when the real tomatoes come, they don't eat them. Did someone say that here? I need to know if that is like a true thing. <laughs> Because I, I would so try that for fun. Because why not? Let's be the silly garden people that like decorate their, their tomatoes. Because if that freaking worked, I'm in. So if any of you guys mentioned that here once before, I need to know. But look how fun these look with, with these tomatoes in already. Cassandra says that's uh, genius if it works. Yeah, like I need to know. <laughs> I should I should just Google it when we're done here. If no one says anything, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it. Cause dang, I love it. And then I need a version of that for um, cucumbers and and uh, like squash and stuff. We should just like hang up like the Christmas pickle. Do you guys know like the Christmas pickle? Like hang, hang some of those up there too. And then they won't eat the cucumber or anything. Cause they'll be like, Oh, that ain't real. I need to know. 
Oh, I keep feeling like I'm getting a knot in the back, but I'm, I'm not. It's fine. Ugh, these little cherry tomatoes are so freaking cute. All right, we got a bunch down at the bottom here, and then I'll jump back up to the top. But this definitely sucks up the thread so quickly. But look how cute! And I just love these tomatoes so much. There's so much just like little texture, and I love those little French knots. It's just so sweet. I, I love it. Oh, Cassandra says you got rabbits that eat everything. Yeah, so the first year... <laughs> It's been a while since we got into this, but like the first year, uh, rabbits ate everything. And then the second year, I think we, we tried raised beds and they still ate it. And then we, we put a, I don't know, like a foot and a half fence, whatever that, like 18 inches, whatever the standard is for little chicken wire fences. We put that around, but we put the plastic, like the green plastic um, fence around and they ate, the rabbits ate right through that. So the next year we did metal chicken wire uh, and they were able, able to jump over that. <laughs> so then we added, did another layer of that up higher. And finally, we have convinced the rabbits that they cannot get in our garden. But it like literally took like that many years of doing that. And it is not pretty. It is like a mess of ugly chip, chicken wire with ugly little like teeny metal stakes that we put in. It's not even pretty. We did not do a, a pretty job. Um, but it's the squirrels, and the squirrels can get into anything no matter what we do, unless we did like a basically a fully enclosed cage, uh, which some neighbors have done. And that is the only thing I can think of that would possibly have any effect on the squirrels, which just sucks because we were doing squash so well for a couple of years until the squirrels figured it out and they literally will eat like three bites of every zucchini and then the zucchinis will just like rot and and it's like oh maybe we can grow enough so that you know we get a couple of them but that worked for like a year and then now it's just I don't know, not working for us anymore. But we so we didn't do any squash this year. So I don't know, maybe maybe I'll save some of these kaboka and delicata seeds and try try those next year. Maybe we can get something or the, like half, so we'll have the other half at least. But like that's gross too. So I don't know. I don't have them squirrels figured out yet. But whatever. Oh no, Aline says I remember someone saying that with the uh the red, the red Christmas ornaments, but the little buggers aren't that stupid. They can tell the difference. That's kind of what I'm figuring. I'm figuring at most it would help for half a month and then they'd be like, nah, and then they'd, they'd get at it, <laughs> eat all the rest of him. All right, that first tomato plant is done. Yeah. All right. Let's hop over here. I don't think I'm going to have enough red to finish all the rest of these. Wow, and I'm about to pull the needle off of the thread there. Stupid squirrels. Pile of jerk butts. That's what they are. But yeah, so now we've refined, <laughs> our garden is like so messy, but we've refined it to the point that we only grow what we eat and what grows a lot for the small area it's in, like kale, for example. We eat a lot of kale and that has a tiny little area and keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So you can get a ton out of like a square foot sort of thing versus like, a cabbage or cauliflower where they take up a lot of space for um, just like one head. Um, and we also have uh, cabbage moths that I think would <laughs> eat that, but they don't, they don't really hurt the, the kale. They don't go after the kale as much. So kale is like our best growing crop, I suppose, the kale. And then we have lettuce that 
has grown. We've just let go to seed because we're lazy. We let go to seed every year and it grows every single year. So we have like free um, lettuce every year and that's been awesome. Uh, and the squirrels don't eat that, the lettuce. So kale and lettuce. And then this year we have peppers that are actually doing well. Those don't have, those don't usually do well for us. And um, squirrels don't like that. We have a lot of tomatoes, but the squirrels or chipmunks, one or the other, have been eating all those. So, but I think there's enough of those that we might be able to catch a few. And we have been able to catch some. Ugh, you know what? I'm going to just end this. This is getting twisty, this thread. And I know for sure I'm not going to... I got like, what, like five or so more to do. And I definitely can't get five out of this. So I'm going to just start... Oops, see, yeah, I'm really messing it up. Come back here, guy. Let's rethread. Ugh, I'm not even going to rethread this. I'm just calling it. Let's snip it. I went back and forth twice. Usually I go three times. It's the th kind of third time that locks it in. All right, I have a tiny little bit here. This might be enough for the remaining. So I'm going to use use this up. Yeah, I'm going to use this up. And we'll start fresh with a new piece for the next part. I'm just going to kind of weave in where I left off. I think that's about where we're sitting. Oh, yeah. Noeline says, why not put some feed out in a feeder well away from the garden? Keep it full so they aren't hungry enough to eat your veggies. We've done that before. They will eat the whole bird feeder full um, without any birds getting to it and still eat everything in the garden. There's just, just, there's just zillions of them in town here. It's just crazy. The first year though, we had like so many rabbits and I, I don't feel like I've ever seen that many rabbits ag again. Um, I mean, maybe it's cause they can't get in the garden anymore, but, uh, that first year we had some crazy amounts of rabbits. I mean, we still do see rabbit babies and stuff. And teenager babies, but, man. All right, a few more hiding in here. One. Two more, so. All right, and one more. And we are done with tomatoes and done with this little thread too. He's getting twisty. Nice to use up a little scrap, though. So as far as red goes, we got, like, these five little guys, our little radishes here, and then we got our, our birds, our red as well. But after that, we're done with the red. I'm definitely going to need to pull a new piece, though, for all that. I know I need to bring, uh, Catherine's saying I need to bring Chad Kitty up for a visit. Oh my god, he would not do well with that. He has his home and I do not think he wants to uh, leave little chat kitty so cute all right here we go tomatoes are done I think they're looking really really fun all right let's move on hey we got that entire bed done our garden is growing here people all right let's do Oh, let's do the the um, actual bed. Let's do the the brown bit. And I don't. All I have is like little scraps that I don't really especially want to use. I'm gonna cut a new piece. Yeah, these two scraps aren't gonna get me all the way around. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I need a full new piece. Oh, but this is where I wasn't. I'm not gonna pull a really long piece and then pull the single strands out and double it up. I'm just going to pull like my normal amount and we'll um, just 
like 18 inches or so and I'll just pull two strands at a time that I'm not like wasting you know a bunch of extra thread so instead of taking the one strand and doubling it up I'm just gonna pull two shorter strands you know one at a time still one zoop, two and um, so instead of doubling it up I'm putting just two next to each other doubling one up to make two I'm just putting two shorter ones here and I think you know I don't really have any stitches to weave in the backs of you know like how I usually start when I'm not doing the loop method of starting um, I think I might just weave into the backs of the stitches right here and then jump to uh, like the bed here and start stitching because this jump I know I'm gonna be stitching um, I know I'm going to be stitching a fence right here, so if I jump right there on the back, you're not going to be able to see it because on the front, the fence line will be in the way, so I think that's going to be my strategy to starting. Then I don't have to start with an away knot, um, a waist knot. It's just nicer to just be able to weave in the end here, I think. Oh, Nolene says we don't have uh, squirrels or chipmunks in... In Australia so what's your like garden pest there do you have rabbits still we're not still but do you have rabbits like like we do all right we are headed around but see where if I hold it up to the light you can see the uh, um, where I put that stitch I jump from there over to here but if I go um, outside of the light it's just the exact same path as uh, this fence line that I'm gonna draw or that I'm gonna stitch um, soon here or I don't know tomorrow maybe but yeah so that's that you won't be able to see that anymore I think we haven't put bird food in the feeders for I think a couple of years just because it does get completely eaten by squirrels but I wonder we have them up and we kind of wash them down because they're kind of gross and I think I may have a little bit of seed left I should just put that in there and use it up and I don't know it'd be nice to have birds go to it again even though it's mostly squirrels but I feel like if I feed them now, then they're going to know that it's there, <laughs> which means they're going to expect it over winter and stuff, and I don't know. I don't know if I'll actually keep that up, so. I don't want to starve them by feeding them now and then not feeding them later. All right, so I'm gonna do this bed all the way around the back of this. I'm not gonna leave the, those little gaps like I did on this one. Um, we're just gonna go right over like how we did back here. I think I'll definitely need another two strands to finish this up, but that's kind of what I was thinking. But we'll finish the garden, except for right now, all the squirrels and um, all the squirrels and chipmunks and rabbits will still be able to get in because we don't have the, the rest of the fence built. But <laughs> got a little ahead of ourselves. We grew our garden before finishing the fence. That's no good. I was thinking of, put a, of putting a little squirrel in this but eh, it was kind of small already so left him out of there hey I'm so excited to finish those tomatoes though I, I really like them itty bitty tomatoes Yeah, 
It would be fun to have a little kitty, though, that lived in the garden. And Chad always likes going to the garden when we're over by the garden. So he'll just... He, he figured out that with the door closed of my parents, my parents have a little, um, there's his fenced in too. More for deer than for squirrels. <laughs> uh, but, so they have like a little wood door on theirs, but he figured out that he's can squeeze in. So whenever we go, when wherever we're on like the outside of the garden walking around at my parents' house, Chad will like be sitting inside the garden watching and then ha he has to figure out how to get himself back out, which is just silly. Silly kitty. Oh, Nolene says, okay, Ozzy possums, mice, bush rats. Oh, they eat your macadamias in the tree. Oh my gosh. We feed apple and bananas every night to our possums. Oh, there are three. Oh my gosh. The old mother brings her babies every year. So cute. Wow. So we have opossums here, which, but I know that they're different. <laughs> uh, uh, possums. Uh, my brother lived in Australia for a little bit, and uh, he crochets. So he, uh, he got possum yarn. Um at I don't know somewhere a yarn shop and it is like the softest freaking yarn <laughs> but it's crazy yeah they're 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 kind of like little rodent rodent-y little guys aren't they oh my gosh he, he pets them or pats them. Oh my gosh. Are they that like you get right up to them? Ooh, that kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> I suppose in some places, um, in the U S like in big cities, sometimes like squirrels will come right up to you and you can feed them and stuff, but ugh, no, thanks. All right, I'm going to totally lose. Oh, God, do you think I am? I'm going to try and get this in in um, with just this little thread, but I don't have that much thread left, so I'm going to do that forward stitch, then back stitch, which I don't always like doing because I think it looks a little bit different, just so subtly, and I always have to remember if I just did a front stitch or back stitch, which is annoying, but it does preserve the thread a little bit, so I do like using it if I get into, like... A situation where I think I'm gonna run out of um, thread just doing the back stitch. So see here, I'm doing a forward stitch, coming up in that same hole. Now I'm doing a back stitch. Ooh, and I have enough to just do a back stitch, so I'm gonna do that. So that worked out. So I didn't need a whole nother piece. That makes me happy. There we go. Our last bed here. Um, I'm going to weave this in. And we will get that, those other veggies planted. All right. All right, so we have some radishes and uh, I think like some onions. We got some onions grown there. So let's do, I kind of want to do the onions first. So that is with the light colored green. And we do have a piece of that cut already. We just got to get our, um, our single strand out. So this is still that extra long um, piece cut cut thread that we're going to fold in half to get our two strands. And I think these are just going to be a bunch of um, back stitches. Oops. Come back here. Ugh, my nails are driving me crazy. I gotta 
Gotta do them tonight, I think. Alright, and I think this is just, yeah, like I said, a whole pile of back stitches. Could probably just do these in one big stitch. I think that'd be kind of cute too, but we're gonna do them back stitches. We'll do like three stitches each. So the onions are the light color. I mean, in real life, I guess they're the dark color, but eh. And then um, the radishes will do, or maybe they're actually, eh, they could be beets. I think they're more beet leaves than radish leaves, but oh well. Oh my gosh. So Noeline says, yes, they come down from the tree and the mom taps him on the shoulder. What? To get to the bowl of fruit. Mother Possum used to sit on the front step with Gary, the stray cat. Oh my gosh. And the possum. It was so funny to watch. Oh my gosh. I would watch that TV show. <laughs> Little possum and, and uh, kitty cat friends. That's nice. Aw. If I knew that they were doing that at like 6 a.m. every morning, I would get up and make coffee earlier just so I could sit and watch them. That is so cute. Okay. Yeah, we'll stick to three stitches. Like, I could probably get away with two stitches for each of these, and that'd go faster, but... I committed to three already. Let's do three. And actually, I think one would have been pretty cute, too, but oh well. We're in it. I'm doing it. This one I'm doing, too. excited to get the rest of this fence up. It's just kind of fun stitching over stitches that are already there, like the overlap of it. It's just kind of fun. Fun to do. We do have uh, chipmunks that run across our front door sometimes, so that's kind of cute, but not like a kitty and possum friend. That'd be neat. I think when they do the possum yarn, though, I think it's blended. I think it's one of those ones that you kind of have to, like Angora, um, like uh, Rabbit Angora, I think you typically blend that with some other alpaca or wool, um, sheep's wool. So it's like a percentage sort of thing. Something like that. But John has a hat made out of it and it's very, very soft. And well used. It's got tons of holes in it. <laughs> Actually, is it knit? That might be a knit hat. Uh, nah, it's crocheted, but like just really delicately. Alright, a couple more plants here. I think we're just gonna combine this like it's the same bit. I think we might just get um, the interior components of this garden done tonight. So tomorrow we will fence it all in and uh, yeah, get some of the flowers on the fence posts and maybe some of the birds. I think the fence actually might take some time. Okay, last little bit. And we'll 
we'll switch to the other green again. One more stitch. And there we go. Oh, thanks, thanks, Teresa. Or Teresa, let me know. Let me know if I'm saying it right. Those are our little, uh, it's our kind of penguin fish swag needle minder. <laughs> But yeah, we have we have that guy in a couple different colors, and um, we're working on getting some more needle minders made. I think they're just super fun. All right, let's do more of the dark green. What do we got for thread? Whole pile of random threads sitting around here. Oh, this is an extra piece of that, like the last piece of a really the one of the long ones that we can fold. Awesome. We're definitely going to need more when we do all this grass. That's going to take a lot. So these are like a bunch of teeny little V's, basically, with um, with a leaf on top. And I think I'm going to kind of just do the V on the top and then like the little stem. I think that'll make sense in a sec here. So let's get our guy threaded. Get the little pit bit growing in the ground there. So these are all gonna have little uh, French knots in the bottom. But I think I'm gonna do that. So they're gonna be like a bunch of letter Y's actually, kind of like that. And then I'll, I'll get the, um, the lazy daisy or that single chain stitch here. Did it with the sewing method this time. And this side. And the stabbing method for this side. Just because both of those felt the most comfortable at the time. up. Five of these little guys. All right, back in the same hole. Red raptor on the needle, and then we can pull through. There, just shaping it a little bit more. Actually, I might move the needle miner now. He's going to start getting in my way down here. I think we put them down here when we were working on these plants way up top, but now you in my way. Let's scooch. Let's go like up here. There we go. Oh, Caitlin, that is really cute. Caitlin says, my needle minder says, I solemnly swear a lot. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Let's do the stabbing method. Come 
Come on, guy. Thread's getting a little shorter, so it's a little harder. I think I'm going to have to do the sewing method. I think that's just easier when I, um, for these for some reason. But that means I'm going to have to rotate a little. Uh oh, I think I only grabbed one to go through. Come back here. Let's see if I can fix this. Go through the second thread. There we go. Some of these want to overlap a little bit, and it's making me think, ooh, I should have started at the one furthest back, like furthest up the row up here, and then stitch this way, because then if some of these other ones got in front, of that one, um, it would look correct. So I'm just kind of squeezing them in there. Left is uh, the little radish bulbs or whatever coming out the top. Maybe they're beets. I'm going to call them beets. The little red beets coming out the top. We should try beets again. I don't know if we've ever. Um, I don't know if we've ever tried growing beets before. Oh, actually, I think we have. I think we've tried growing radishes, too. And I think we just need to do all the work. Like, we need to, like, thin them out once they're grown and, and all that. Because they didn't. They're pretty thin. Like, little. And nothing to them. If I remember right. <laughs> Caitlin says, also diamond painting. Y'all gotta stop mentioning new crafts. I get intrigued and the bank account cries. I know that's been kind of on my radar a little bit too. Um, Cause I know a lot of people have been mentioning that lately. And actually I was just, I think the other had to be a weekend ago. So not last weekend, but the weekend before I had Twitch on the TV. Like I just figured out how to put it on the TV and I was just like, oh, I'm going to, look at the craft section, see, see what people are doing in like craft land as far as Twitch goes. And at that time in the morning, it was, there, there wasn't really much, uh, like related to kind of what I do, but what there was, there, there was at least two, uh, diamond people doing their diamond painting. And then I think there was like a couple, like maybe one cross stitch person. Um, but yeah, those couple couple of diamond paintings, painter people on there. Okay, let's get these five little French knots. I'm gonna just loop around some existing stitches here again, just like that, and we will give each of these a little red French knot at the bottom. Cute. All right, I'm going back to radishes. I think they look like radishes. I 
think when we're done with this, we will call it an evening here. So tomorrow we will uh, put the fence up and hopefully maybe get maybe some of these flowers that are in the corner of, of the fence. Of each fence post. Oh, Lydia says, I love diamond painting. <laughs> so we got one vote for diamond painting fun. Oh, Amy says, wait, what is Twitch? Uh, I've been thinking of going on that again. It's um, uh, my brother's basically full-time work is there. So it's another streaming platform. It's actually one of the original uh, streaming platforms. Um... So it's been around for a while, but it's been mostly, like, gaming. So, like, you watch other people uh, do, like, video gaming. And you can, you know, a lot of times in the layout you can see their head or, like, you know, other things going on. Sometimes they have, like, the fish cam or the cat cam. And you can just, uh, you know, you can chat and hang out with them while they game and chit-chat and stuff. Basically what we do here. Uh, but gaming, but now they have a whole craft area and music area and just like a bunch of other areas to the, to the you know, categories basically. And uh, I know crafting is, is big on it too. So I've been kind of just, my brother's been on it for years and years and years. They have like gaming tournaments on there and he announces like gaming tournaments. Wait, that's not what it's called. Announcing commentating he commentates <laughs> games and and plays and tests out new games and stuff it's just really kind of fun but yeah very similar to what we're doing here but just you know slightly different format slightly different vibe um slightly different ways of doing things but they do have a craft section and so i finally figured out how to get it on the tv and and uh, so i could just like chill and watch people um and uh yeah, some diamond painting on there. <laughs> uh, so there we go. We have a garden here. Um, so like I said, tomorrow we need to fence them in so them squirrels don't eat all my tomatoes. <laughs> uh, so that'll be tomorrow's job. We will finish this front fence, just kind of how we did, did this back. And again, we waited to do the front because I wanted to stitch all the things inside the garden first because the fence is going to overlap some of these lines just how the garden overlapped some of the fence lines here and then the fence overlapped the trees back here so we really are kind of stitching as the farthest thing back and then like moving forward that's kind of um the little deal with with this embroidery so yeah i'm, I'm excited though we're getting there for sure we are on uh we we're past the halfway point for sure i think <laughs> So, all right, you guys, I'm very happy with how far we got on that tonight. Um, I think we will get through this um, fence pretty quickly. Maybe we'll do the sewing method. Maybe we can practice that tomorrow, and then that will just, like, speed it up even more. I mean, the sooner we can get this done, the better, because uh, then we can play around with some other projects uh, before the month is over. Luckily, this month <laughs> extends quite a bit, so... Uh, we'll have like a good amount of next week to play around as well. Um, so awesome. So thank you guys again for joining me and I will see you tomorrow at 8 30 PM central time. And we'll work on getting this guy a little bit further, <laughs> one hour further. So thanks again. I'll see you then. Good night.